Well, having discussed potential energy at point charges, we're now ready to extend that idea to what we call potential, not potential energy. So there is a difference. First, let's consider point charge Q. And it is a certain distance R from Q0. So we have two charges. We've already analyzed how to get the electric potential energy between those two. So what do we mean by potential? So what is, in particular, the potential from Q, from this charge here at this location, B? Now, it turns out it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter at all, actually, about what Q0 is. The energy between these has a lot to do with Q0, but not the potential. Starting concept is potential is energy per charge, which is work A to B over charge. So what does that mean? Well, the work done by the electric field in moving Q0 from A over to B. That's what that means, divided by this charge. So if the work done is directly proportional to the charge and we divide it by the charge, we can see it's going to go away. So Q0 really has no fundamental significance for the potential from big Q. So this is by the field. Now, this is equal to negative delta U over Q0, negative change in potential energy, which is equal to the work done by the electric field. And that is negative change, negative final minus initial. So that's what we define as each one of these is potential. So potential at B minus potential at A. So there it is, minus VB minus VA, which is VA minus VB. So we see at this point that the potential is discovered by realizing it's the change in electric potential energy in moving the charge from A to B divided by the charge. So that's what it gives us. So work A to B over Q0 is VAB, which is VA minus VB. And that is always going to be consistent with moving a ch charge across a region of space. The amount of work that the, that the conservative force does is equated to the potential when you divide it by the charge. So VAB, the potential of A with respect to B. So these subscripts are really important. The A and the B are in the order that they are because it is a conservative force, the electric force, so that the work done is not just the change in energy, but it's the negative change. So because of that negative, we end up instead of B minus A, we have A minus B. It's kind of like initial minus final. So that's how that subscript translates. So it equals the work done by the electric force when a unit charge goes from A to B. Now having said all that, the next thing I'm going to put is going to look a lot simpler and it may seem different, but it's really not. Because potential is always with respect to some location. All right, what we just did up here so far is A to B. So we had two different regions of space that we were considering. Now, volts is energy per charge. So I'm going to write it this time as just U over Q0, so the potential energy over the charge, instead of negative change in potential energy. Well, we've already analyzed what the potential energy is. It's KQQ over R. So that's the electric potential energy. But now we have to divide it by Q0, which makes the Q0s go away. And we have our result for potential. And there it is. The potential from a point charge is KQ over R. Now the reason this is not inconsistent with what we did here is because, as I already mentioned, the potential is always with respect to something. When we did this potential energy, we did the work to move the charge from where it is, namely at location R, out to infinity. 
and I'll go over that again, but that's what this is based on. So there's the potential from a point charge. Considering the equation for potential from a point charge, V is equal to KQ over R, we see that the potential is independent of the test charge, as I already discussed. But if the big Q is positive, then V is positive, and it's going to be positive everywhere for any value of R. So in all space, it's positive. If Q is negative, then you have a negative sign in front of the whole thing, so V is negative in all space. Now let's consider what happens to potential as we go toward and away from either a plus or minus charge. If it's a positive charge and we go toward it, the radius is getting less, so the number is getting bigger, and it's a positive number, so the potential is going up. It's kind of, I guess if you think of potential as voltage, and uh, this is actually a scalar force field, that as you get closer to this entity, it's going to have a greater value. That's probably intuitively obvious, but we got to be careful with our intuition here. As we move away from big Q, R is getting larger, so the size of V is getting smaller. The potential is going down. Now, potential is actually based on the idea of a positive test charge. See, we don't have a positive test charge here necessarily. We're talking about potential. It's independent of Q0. But if there was a Q0, as we move away, and that Q0 was positive, then this charge is shoving it away and reducing the potential energy. So it's also then consistent with what's happening to the potential energy of a positive charge. But again, we just have to be careful. This is based on a positive charge. With a negative charge, we have well, some opposite things happening. As we approach the negative charge, the size of R is getting less, so the number is getting bigger, but it's a negative. So it's getting more negative, so V is going down. As we move away, the number is getting smaller and it's a negative number so v is going up less negative now for a collection of charges we've already discussed the potential energy of a collection of charges and since v is energy per charge now this is going to be the energy of q0 in association with a multiplicity of charges so the energy, as we discussed, was K, sum of all the Q0, QI over RIs. And so we're just dividing by Q0, and there it is. Well, now it goes away, so we have this simple result that V is equal to K, sum of the Q over Rs. So really, it's just the sum of all the potentials of however many point charges we have. Well, if it's just the sum of the potentials, then you can have an infinite number of them. You could even have an infinite distribution of them. So this logically follows in this, in this manner, that we're going to integrate, namely, all the differential Qs at the particular R. So 1 over R dQ is consistent with this idea, an infinite sum at all the particular Rs for the given geometric distribution of charge that we're talking about, and each point being a dq. So there is a nice general result for the potential of an infinite distribution. Now a very important fundamental consideration for potential is how it relates to electric field. So we just discussed what the potential is, is associated with a charge and a charge is producing an electric field so it's pretty obvious that they should go together and they do. So here we have q and we have little q between a and b and of course if we move little q from a to b we discuss the work it takes to do that work is now integral of f dot dl and the force is q times e that's the electric force on little q whatever the e field is so dotted with dl so work per charge wab per charge is VA minus VB, which is the integral from A to B of E dot DL. That is an extremely important result. You see, how do we find the potential difference between A and B? Well, integrate the E field. Simple as that. Now, if the integral is positive, then V is decreasing from A to B. That should be pretty obvious. 
If it's positive, then VA must be bigger than VB. So as you go from here to here, the potential must be going down. For any electric field, if you're moving with E or against E, you can make the following statement. I mean, after all, the if this is positive, that means since you're integrated in this direction, the DLs are in this direction, the E must be in that direction for this to be positive. Well, if the E is in this direction, then if we go with E, if we're moving with E in that direction, then the potential must be going down. And if we're moving against E, going the other way, potential is going up. So that's always true. That has nothing to do with this little Q now. All right? So it only has to do with this guy. Of course, the, this, that statement, though, is going to be reversed if Q has the opposite sign. Now, VA minus VB is also equal to the negative integral from B to A, flipping the limits of V dot DL. And what that really is corresponding to is the work per charge by an external force to move the little charge from B back to A. The E-field units, as we've already known, are newtons per coulomb. But now we see that here's E. And basically, you take volts and divide it by meters. And so newton per coulomb is also a volt per meter. So electric field can now be expressed in terms of how many volts divided by the region of space in meters across which that potential difference actually exists.